Greetings, it's Maxo Diddley, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can get the current price of a stock using Python. Let's get right into it. So firstly, you're going to need to do pip install y finance. So you can either type that into your Python console, or if you're in Visual Studio, you can go to the Solution Explorer, click on your project, go to Python environments, then click on your Python environment, right click, go to manage Python packages, then type in yfinance, and then you can do pip install yfinance by clicking on the blue text. Once you have that installed, you need to do these three lines of code. Import yfinance as yf, import time, and from date time, import date time. So basically, we're going to be doing an infinite loop, and we're going to be printing the stock price of a stock that the user inputs every 60 seconds. And we're going to print out the precise time because that might be needed for more volatile stocks, like GameStop, which hopefully is going to the moon. So firstly, let's do ticker symbol equals input, enter the ticker symbol dot to upper, and then do interval equals 60. So here we're going to be getting the ticker symbol of the stock we want to track, the three or four letter abbreviation like GME for GameStop. We're going to do dot two upper because they're normally presented as uppercase letters. It doesn't need to be uppercase. It has no impact on fetching the price, but it might look nicer. And we're going to do interval equals 60. So why finance uses Yahoo Finance to get the data. And you can get the, the lowest time interval you can get for data is every minute. So if you were to do, let's say an interval of 30 seconds, you would see the same price twice because Yahoo Finance will give you the price every minute as the lowest time interval. So a value below 60 isn't really gonna have any benefit. After that, we're going to do printf, check in for stock price for ticker symbol every interval seconds. So when you do a print statement, if you do an F before the speech marks, you can insert variables using curly brackets. So this ticker symbol here isn't going to get printed out. Instead, whatever the value of the ticker symbol variable gets printed here. Same with the interval variable. And you put these in between the curly brackets. Now we're going to do a few lines of code. So we're going to do while true to make an infinite loop. Now you could check for keyboard input or whatever, but this tutorial is focusing on getting stock price data, so we're not going to go into that. You can just hit the X in the top right corner of your program to close it. Then we're going to do try ticker data equals yf dot ticker ticker symbol. And then we're going to do accept exception as E and then do printf date time dot now dot str time this format. An error occurred and E. Don't worry, all of this code is in the description below for you to copy and paste. But, but basically, we're going to try and get the stock data. If something goes wrong, we're going to not let the program crash, but instead print out the error and the time. Again, we're using the F feature of printing, so we can insert variables in between curly brackets. And here, we're just going to be getting the ticker data for the particular stock we want to look at. Then we're going to do hist, which is going to be short for history, equals ticker data dot history, period equals one day, interval equals one minute, and prepost equals true. So we're going to be getting the price history of the particular stock for a one period day, and we're going to get the price for every minute in that one day. And prepost means do we want to include pre-market trading and post-close market trading data in this data? And we want to because that's when GameStop gets very volatile and is fun to watch. Then we're going to do if not hist.empty, ticker price equals hist close dot ILOC minus one, else ticker price equals none. So here, if the list isn't empty, meaning there's data in the list, we're going to get the last price in that list, or the one that's most recent. And otherwise, we're going to set the value of ticker price to be none. Then we're going to do current time equals date time dot now dot strf time and then a time date format. So we're going to get the current date and time of the computer, and then we're going to print it out then we're going to store it in this particular format. So it's year, month, day, hour, minute, seconds, and store it in the current time variable. 
And if the ticker price is not none, meaning it has a value, we're going to print out that value and the time. Again, using the F feature of the print function. Otherwise, we're going to say we couldn't retrieve the stock price for the ticker symbol. Also, after the exception, we do time.sleep interval. So we do all the code to get the price and we wait the amount of seconds. We're going to wait between getting the price and then we do it again. So let's just remove those unused lines and save our work and hit play. So we're going to type in GME because we want to check the price on it. And as you can see, it's currently at $51.15 as of making this video. And as you can see, the stock price actually went up in that minute I was sat there doing nothing, meaning I technically made money for doing nothing. Also, you'll notice the time is in the UK 2109.34, which converted to US time means we are currently in the aftermarket, showing that this does work for aftermarket hours. And to close the program, we're gonna hit X. One thing I will mention, for printing out the price, we are going to be setting it to do decimal points because that's what most currencies use. Anyway, thanks for being a great audience. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed and subscribe for more tutorials. Thanks for watching.